Hi. We're the Death Hilarious. And unfortunately, we're the last of the good guys. Cheers. Cheers! It's the drinking episode. No, episode it's not. Four. No, it's not. It's not really. We will do one more day, but not just having a drink. Because it's a Saturday. Because it's a Saturday. And why can't two boys go out and have a good time like they used to do? Not before you were Nintendos and the Playstations and your internets and that all the strangulation pornography. So they used just to see and then tally. Why can't just people go out? And a nice time sit watching the circus or watching the Ethel and Stan scene when the floor is really hot and they can't like, they can't like, they can't like, they can't. Why is that? Why is life watching? Why is life watching? This swans, birdie, is life this the swans are going down and you think this is a fucking joke. He likes his football machine. You see, that's all just a good one. He used to go in his past time. The swans are going down and you think this is a fucking joke. Hey, come on now, stop being on. What do you mean now? Mm. I'm just trying to have a nice yeah, time now, me and the boys, you know, and they'll go for no, a lovely shit right down there. The swans are going down and you think it's a fucking joke. Oh, I don't talk to me like that oh, now. Everyone's looking round at us. We everyone always looks at us in the restaurant because we're always shouting, turning the voice box up to full volume oh, when you're deaf and it does that screechy thing and you're scaring the boys and you're scaring me. Hi, welcome to episode four. Hey guys, of last of the good guys. Um, yeah, do you want to start by reading? Um, by reading that. Uh, yeah, this is something um, somebody told me about recently, um, which uh, is going to bookend the podcast. Basically, this type of thinking. Um, so this is like basically a, a public figure. Let's just yeah. say that. And this is from their website. Yes. Uh, on their, they've got a blog on their website, and it says, um, Hi everyone, much of my time at the moment is taken up with travelling all over the country to comic cons. And quite frankly, I am really enjoying it. It was great to see everyone who came to a very busy Barnsley Comic Con recently, and it marked my first attendance at an Unleashed event. This was a well-organised Comic Con with a great atmosphere, and I very much look forward to attending more Unleashed events in the coming months. Away from the happy, positive world of Comic Cons, you may have noticed that, as far as the national picture is concerned, the cost of living continues to soar, while our alleged parliamentarians, they are not leaders but merely administrators working to a destructive global agenda, are, as usual, hell-bent on looking after themselves instead of the suffering public. This situation looks to continue, as the globalists now have their man in place, a person utterly unsuited to the role of doing his best for the people of Britain, but a person utterly and totally suited to pushing on with the New World Order's so-called Great Reset program to enslave humanity under technocratic control. Look, I know many of you must be thinking that I've lost it big time, but believe me, once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. All rather worrying, frankly. Charity-wise, I'm looking to support small local charities directly, still with an emphasis on veterans and ex-servicemen and women. I continue to believe that the treatment by the state of those who have been prepared to pay the ultimate price has been nothing short of shocking. I shall also be supporting other worthy local charities. I look forward to seeing some of you at an event soon. Best wishes, Chris Barry. Yes, so uh, who you'll of course remember as the star of the British Empire playing Gordon Britters and Arnold Rimmer from Red Dwarf. It's cold outside, my wife won't let me in because I have lost the plot. <laughs> I think there's a global conspiracy Run by Jews Run by Jews He hasn't actually said anything I just no, I mean, in that. Although I reckon if you, you get a few ru- you get a few ruddles in him yeah. You know he's going to start talking about the, he's gonna the, start, the jury he's gonna, Yeah, he'll be talking about the Rothschilds and everything They all end up talking about that It's a Saturday uh, After this we are going out Aren't mm-hmm. we? What do you what, what's 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 an evening like out with the uh, the old the old death hilarious? What kind of night out is that? You'll hit you'll get really you'll get very drunk early, earlier than everybody else. Yeah, um, and you'll hit like your eleven p.m. Mother. wall. <laughs> oh no no no! no. Yeah, although she does deserve it. No, she doesn't. She, um, she's no, great. you'll you'll hit the wall. Not literally. He's no. Not that much of a psycho no but you'll hit like this kind of you'll talk absolute nonsense 
at 11. For an hour, you'll talk nonsense. Then by midnight, I granddad's ready for bed. Bed buys, yeah. Granddad's ready for bed. And But that's where grandson's night is just starting. Well, this is the thing. I'm always amazed because I never understood for years why people did cocaine. Because I've never really been into any drugs, just because I'm... You Man, know, I, don't listen to him. I don't do cocaine. I'm okay. interesting. No, no, this is the thing. No. Darren doesn't do any drugs at no. all, yet still has the energy of someone on cocaine when he's out. It was like, and I'm yeah. 37 now, yeah. which is, is even more even more bizarre. But basically, I get... He's got like what, something wrong with his thymus gland or something. I don't know what <laughs> it is. Like, I don't know how that works. It's an underdeveloped hypothalamus. It's uh, in the same, <laughs> uh, the same vicinity as, you know, um, I don't know, bipolar, I guess. <laughs> some sort of, of severe mental health problem. Um, and I've got mental health problems, so I can say that. He has. He's taken medication yeah, for them. True. Um, if anyone from the BBC is listening, if anyone from the BBC is listening, I have I have felt pretty down in the. He dumps wears a dress, times. and he's been on antidepressants. <laughs> yeah, so so that, if that if that in a series, four part web series, please. Thank you. Away, but it is it is bizarre. I don't really know where the energy comes from. I can only see the fires of hell, probably. <laughs> I'm going to be uh, hit flasking it, as I normally do. So this is yep. this leather jacket here is what I usually wear. This has got a lot of inside pockets, so sometimes yep. I'll, I'll go Ladies' double. purses. Ladies' purses. Watches. Um, yep, diabetic prescriptions uh, yep. for diabetic medication. Um, and then, yeah, I'll double hit flask then, normally, and um, buy Cokes all night, and people will wonder why I'm absolutely hammered off uh, ten, spent, pe- yeah. te- ten half Pepsi Maxes. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's very much what, yeah, that's kind of how we how how we roll. Yeah, um, I can imagine people paying an auction for this in a few years. <laughs> <laughs> well, this, this, what, this YouTube video? No, just people trying to pay, you know, pay an auction, to a charity auction to spend a night with us. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that's true. Yeah, that would be. Um, I think I, I think I'd give them a pretty good time. We, you know, we, we put you to bed, and then we go out and, and yeah. dance the night away. Yeah. And then uh, she goes missing. <laughs> uh, that's what would happen. <laughs> I might have an alibi. You got a be great alibi. You're sleepy like, town. Yeah, check the CCTV. I was I was in my hotel yeah, yeah. room. By I got an alibi 12. from the Sandman. <laughs> and that's what they end up calling me then. The and Sandman. he's the Sandman. Yeah. The Sandman. Don't go to sleep, kids. Cause the Sandman, Sandman gonna get you. <laughs> the Sandman gonna come and gonna get you. Check your hourglass, kiddies. Make sure the sand don't run out. Cause when that happens, I'm sand. gonna slit your throat. <laughs> okay, just murders. It's like the met- no, the metaphor yeah runs out of steam pretty quick. Yeah. <laughs> I consult my hastily written notes. Uh, Bobby knocking. Oh yeah, this is something we um, we wanted to talk about because we didn't call it that, by the way. Well, this is the thing. Differs I... in different regions. This this is yeah. when so, just for clarification, just for our American viewers. <laughs> I'd love to know what Americans call it. Actually, yeah, yeah. What do you call that? It's basically <laughs> knocking on the door and running away. Yeah, that's it. You you knock somebody's front door. With the express purpose of causing them misery and irritation, because <laughs> that's all it is. And then the you point watch is to them. get elderly people out of bed <laughs> and drive <laughs> them further towards an early grave. That's that's yeah. the point of the game. Because well, for, for, for me it was. For me it was. Like I, you know, <laughs> when I used to do it to my own nan, you know, I just oh. going, come on, I want to get that inheritance. Well, this is the problem, right? Let's 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 get to a definition. So in Swansea, in the part of South Wales where I come from, it's called bobby knocking. Where Darren comes from, which is about an hour's drive away, mm, we called it Ratty. Yeah, it's called Ratty, which was, which was a derivation of rat a tat tat. Oh right, okay, that's so okay. That makes ratty. sense. Um, I I've heard other people. I think English people have called it like knock knock ginger, knock knock ginger, knock down ginger. Yeah, and perhaps the least imaginative all uh, of all is uh, knock a door run. Which knock on the door, run away, climb over the garden fence, and hide in your parents' bedroom, laughing. And I mm. remember, so I've got a ratty story. Okay. Um, so there was there's uh, my parents' street, the street behind my parents' street. Um, there's like for some reason half of the street have gardens. Okay. And then the set, the other half don't have gardens. So basically, their door opens straight up onto, onto the, the pa- curb, onto the pavement. Yeah. 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 Right. So uh, basically, there's there's a house on the corner that what. 
I you could do was you could just reach around the corner oh, no way. and bang on the window without actually give yourself, stepping onto the give street your, and give yourself a kind of a head start oh, basically good. by doing that. Yeah, I never had that. So I did that once, and I just like my basically my friends were all we were all kind of chatting. We'd done it, you know, when you do something a few times. Like, oh yeah, this is brilliant, and we'd done it like a few nights in a yeah. row. And I remember they were all sort of in a circle chatting about like whose houses we were going to hit. <laughs> And, uh, and 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 while they were chatting, just to kind of make everyone scatter and shit themselves, I reached around the corner and went. Ding, 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 ding. What you did it really, like without I did any it, warning, I did it without any any permission, or any just consent. threw the grenade. I threw the grenade. I'm a quick run, and wow. I did it, and we all scattered. I pegged it down the road, down the alleyway, and I was just making a beeline for my parents. House, and I was running, and I turned around. The woman whose house it was in was right at the end of the alleyway, looking at me, and I just saw this this bump. There. Oh. She was heavily pregnant, and I remember running upstairs through the back door, do, 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 right past my parents. They saw me running <laughs> past, but I thought if I run fast enough, they won't be able to see me. I am a like, ru- a, like a cartoon, like, yeah, 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 like Wild Coyote, <laughs> like Road Runner. Like, his it legs out. used to go around. I, I remember if I go run upstairs, do, 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 ran all the way upstairs, and just <laughs> it's like the afternoon. Got in my bed and was going. <gasps> <laughs> like, like much like, cartoons that addled your brain by this yeah, point like up, like, do you also like, try and get an acme hole and run through the wall <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah I tried to yeah I painted a tunnel on the wall and the pregnant woman went Burr. I ran through it and then the pregnant woman stopped did she, she get lost you a bit. oh fuck me da she didn't. That was just an idea. That's not true. She didn't. She didn't lose a baby, but she did lose faith in the young men of her community. Yeah, Drew. And, um, did your parents back you up? I don't. I don't remember getting in trouble for it, but I know they they came up and and my mother was like, "Well, this, you know, say so Sarah's just knocked on my door and said she'd be knocking on it. She's heavily pregnant." And I was just like, "No, mum, I've been up here the whole time, just copping a few Z's, getting tired from all the homework I've been doing." <laughs> Um, no, I do have um, I do have uh, a Bobby knocking story um, because this is similar to yours, but in a way, like I don't know. Well, it's, it's oh, still still get chills thinking about it. When I was about ten. I was going to knock the door of a man on my parents' street who was who they still have arguments with to this day. He's a half Greek bloke who's very disagreeable. He's not a nice man at all, um, and. I remember once we, we Bobby knocked him, um, my brother I think, and my brother hid in this tree, and he um, not far from his house, and this bloke opened the door and he went, I can see you up the tree, sunshine. I used to speak like, still does speak like that. He goes, I can see you up the tree, sunshine. And my brother, it's my brother just called like his bluff and stayed. It's, like it's like a Bing Crosby song or something. <laughs> I can see you up that tree, sunshine. I'm I can me. see you kissing me, sunshine. <laughs> but then we, a few weeks later, we decided to go at it again. And I remember I, I went up the drive, kind of, kind of like you did. I went up the side of his house. Yeah. And then kind of like, and then went round to knock the door. And as I knocked it, the door opened. Oh, no. <laughs> well, you yeah. made no contact with any surface. You just it went, just went... Ugh. Yeah, but this is the thing. I My ass <laughs> fell out to me, and I thought I was done. And then I heard his wife go, Peter? And he went, all right. <laughs> and he closed the door again. Okay. But it was purely his wife calling him back in. Save me from basically walking straight into him, which is what I yeah, would have done. She knew. I think she knew. She did. I think that's why. He, I think, you, well, she, ra- she she died quite suddenly, and I think it was because I think he found out yeah. she be- she betrayed him with the bobby knockers, and then he killed her. Yeah, he just went. You're with the bobby knockers, aren't you? Sunshine. <laughs> yeah, you're with the bobby knockers, aren't you? Sunshine. <laughs> Time to die. Sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> I think. We were in London doing a gig this year in Camden, Camden yeah. and uh, our agent had, had got like um, people. It wasn't just for us, was it? It was for the showcase. The showcase. So a lot of our agents' clients were there, and it was like a it was kind of important night to show off people on her roster. Yeah, and uh, of course there are other people in the audience too. You know, like punters, friends of other acts, and stuff. You don't know who's who. No, you really? have no idea who's who. So you don't know who's Joe or who's Trade. Who's Joe and who's Trade? So. When we were at the bar, there was a guy 
who came up to us and said he really loved our act and all this sort of thing. And we had no idea whether he was like a producer for Channel 4 or something or whether he was just some drunk fucking loser. And uh, not, all, we, no, not that everyone <laughs> who likes our stuff are losers. Just, if, I was, if I were a betting man, <laughs> put money on there the is a cross. Or... There is a crossover. Yeah, that is. Yeah, good Come point, on. Good point. Yeah. Um, so we, yeah, and he was like, uh, oh, guys, have you ever done... Was it, was it mushrooms or psychedelics? I think it was psychedelics, yeah. LSD you wanted us to do, didn't it, it? We kind of went down the road of like, your stuff's mad, boys. You you must like your mushrooms. What, yeah, there. what are you on? Your mushrooms you when you like your that? LSD, yeah, right? No, and we were like, no. not at all, really. Like, you know, booze, but after the gig. Yeah, um, curry, you know, coffee, and, and tea. Yeah, it's mainly childhood trauma, mate. That's where I'm high on right now. Yeah. Someone who says... Oh, what what are you smoking? What what drugs? It's basically a, bo- a, a a boring person trying to understand what being creative is. Yeah, it's that's like, exactly. Oh, what that is. must be drugs. That must be something external that you can take. But we didn't want to tell him to fuck off because we didn't know whether we he thought he was... might have been like a producer or something. So we were like listening to all his bullshit about and just you know, going, oh yeah, cool, just, oh cool, man. So how many times do I need to take to, to before like I start yeah. like frothing at the mouth? Like, yeah. oh. And then he st- and then he was like. Do you want to come back to my flat and do mushrooms with me? And we were like, oh, we can't now. I think by this point, we'd asked our agent, like, is he anyone? Is she, he was like, any she was no. like, nah. Yeah, she was like, never seen him before in my life. So <laughs> we, we made our excuses and we left. So, like, you know, and we were like, no, thanks. We don't, we don't want to be found dead in a bathtub in Camberwell. Um, yeah, 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 exactly. With a, with a, a, yeah. It, yeah, it wouldn't a be worth tied it. like a pig and slit from a to arsehole. Yeah. Do you remember the Mexican lady came up to us in Bristol? Oh, my God. And said she'd left her child sleeping and had no, to get she, back she, to So that was a gig in Bristol, and we came out, and, and, and pretty much all the audience had left. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, And we came out, and there was, like, one like one woman just sat there, kind of in the by the bar area, sat there waiting for us. And she came up, and she went, Guys, you're good. I think yeah, she was American, right? But she was, like, of Mexican heritage. Yeah, basically. she was, yeah, yeah. Hispanic-American. And she was like, Guys, can I... Can I get a picture with you? And it was like it's very yeah it happened a few times with us, very seldom. But sometimes people have asked for pictures, and it's always weird because we're just like, all right, okay, yeah. I don't know why, but yeah, okay. it's like the odd person who enjoyed the act so much. They're like, I cannot believe that these people are not famous, and I'm like, I, 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 and I'm I like, understand. I'm preaching to the choir here, mate. <laughs> but uh... <laughs> and they so like she was like. Oh, can I take it? But we were kind of like did some fucking stupid faces or whatever, and then we were just chatting to her, and she'd revealed that she'd left her son, very young, who was young, like five or six, yeah, like on his own. She was like, "I just live in the flat behind the behind the venue, <laughs> yeah. and I've left my son on his own." And we were like, You'd "Probably go back to him." Yeah, you should probably go back. And she was like, "Oh no, no, no!" She was just kept yeah kept chatting. And I, remember that was making, I remember making a joke and saying, "Yeah, could you replace?" Because she had a son as the screensaver on her phone. I said, "Right, can you replace the picture we just took with with one of your son, please? If you like, <laughs> yeah. if you'd rather be with us, then you need to prove yeah. it, you know." But yeah, I'm sure when we get more famous, we'll have more interesting stories. <laughs> Cheers! Again, since uh, the drinking episode's not. <laughs> it's not. People who get drunk to do comedy are a disgrace. So originally, I think the video was called Worst Movie Ending Ever. Yeah, Worst Movie Ending in History, I think. Uh, yeah. And one of us must have found it and showed it to the other one. And we were obsessed with this... Even seeing his face is it's uh, funny. It's just bringing back a lot of memories. We haven't watched this for a while. Uh, no, it's been a very long it's been time. A very... So this film is called right. So this film is called Student Confidential. It is called Student Confidential. And we became very obsessed with it and its creator, Richard so, Horian. So Richard Horian is the man who's uh, the main character. He's got the beard, a very well kept beard. Yeah. Well manicured beard. I think uh, Glenn definitely modelled uh, his fashion sense on him for a couple of years afterwards. Yeah. Um, so his name, we found out, his name's Richard Horian, and he is the writer, the director, the star, the editor, and also the musician who does the soundtrack and the producer film. and the producer. So uh, he's very much a uh, very much a kind of uh, Orson Welles of kind of Ken Branagh kind of figure kind of terrible uh, 80s films that have sit and, and he's since disappeared so yep. we can't really he's done he I did think... one other film called Williamstown yep he did Student Confident he did Williamstown and then he's vanished so we can't yeah. find any trace of him nope. whatsoever so if anyone who knows him is listening we'd really like to get in touch with Richard Horian that would well, be we, if this podcast like has any legs at all we might actually I'd like yeah 
I'd love to go and try and basically like searching for Sugar Man, but it'll be hunting for Horian. <laughs> and we'll find, try and find him. Yeah. And uh, the, for me, the, the 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 pinnacle will be to get him on for an interview. Oh, I mean, oh, like, yeah, on the phone, Zoom, Skype, anything. anything. Just a letter. Yeah, a letter that we could read yeah. out. That would be perfect. So this is the trailer for Student Confidential. This is a film about teenagers in turmoil. This is Stoogie Confidential. It's about unbridled ambition. I'm going to show them. But most of all, it's about youth's seething energy. No time! A never-ending search for action. Stoogie. Basically what it is, it's Beverly Hills Cop meets, like, Porky's. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of like this bawdy comedy where women sort of get semi-naked. But it's also It's also like, got like really heavy moments where he tries yeah. to take his own life. Yes, yes. It's all like people doing a bit too much. You know? Yeah. You wanna see me get mad, huh? You wanna see me get mad? I can get mad. Oh, I can get mad. A bit like a kind of shit version of um of um net, uh, network. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like a lot of speech making, yeah. but like none of the speeches really make any yeah, sense. Yeah, but there's no Peter Finch in this. No, like, nowhere it's, near it's any Peter Finch. Not, not uh, an Aaron Sorkin. Uh... Aaron Sorkin. Marlon so Marlon Jack- Jackson. When Marlon Jackson is like the star <laughs> draw, you know you're in trouble. You're oh, yeah. Blakely. It's like if as well. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, it's like a really bad John Carpenter film. So that's, oh, that's like it. That's, that's, that's the trailer. So that gives bad. you a little brief glimpse of, of what you're dealing with. But this, so this is what we originally saw, and it was billed as the worst film ending ever. Um, I'm trying to think about like some context of this scene. Is that as far as I remember, because Darren and I. We were in 2010, the greatest arts festival in the world, in one of the greatest cities in the world, in Edinburgh. Edinburgh. And at the time, Student Confidential was on YouTube in its entirety, and, and we watched, watched the, the whole, whole bloody thing. thing. Yeah. And it was really, it's quite boring, the oh, whole thing. It was really film. boring, it was way too long. Yeah. Um, um, but we did. But um, this, is, this is the best bit of it. This is the best found. bit of it. And what, I don't know, as far as I remember... The student guidance counsellor has been like cock of the walk for the whole film, yes. trying to tell people there are their ways. All the students find out he's going through a bit of a tough time. They kind of try and... And they counsel the counsellor. They counsel the counsellor. But they go to his house for like an intervention. Yeah. And he's got a gun and he's lost it. And he goes to top himself yeah. and they help him. And at the end of the film, uh, the kind of... Probably the more together kid who's played by Marlon Jackson... Uh, the geeky kind of one yeah. comes in to sort of see how he's doing, um, and that's all the context you need for this extraordinary yes. ending. Joseph, there will be no concert today. If there were, we would have to face places. Next time. By the way, he's, he's he's speaking like his cheeks are full of Weetabix because he's just been beaten up. Right? <laughs> he's probably trying to do the. Uh, Probably trying to do the Brando trick. Yes. But not pulling it off quite as well. Wool, but he's put way too much cotton wool in. Yeah. So you can barely hear what he's saying. I want to tell you something I do know about. How to make enormous amounts of money in the world of business. I'm put it there. <laughs> From now till the end, it's inexplicable. It goes on for so long. I think what he's trying to do here is squeeze out a real tear. Yes. But I love that the music is basically like 80s funeral music yes. if you were going into a funeral home. Yeah. <laughs> Just the range of emotions that go through this whole scene. Oh. You on drugs, yeah? You on drugs. (laughs) 
All the music, of course, composed by that man you just saw. His, his good self. Rory and himself. His good, he, self. his good self. Again, Rich, if you're out there, mate. We'd and, like to hear uh, from you. I assume you know you're working in uh, like a TGI Fridays or something as the manager <laughs> now. Um, I think he could be the area manager of a 7-Eleven. That's, that's true. That's not yeah, sure. yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, and if you, you know, feel like re- re- reigniting your, um, your your film career, maybe, or, or you know, discussing uh, why you did what you did, why you did what you did, uh, and why then you stopped. Um, yeah, get in touch. Be or cool. If anyone knows Richard, yeah, let us know because we've been obsessed with you quite quite some time. So your work has made an impact. Your work has definitely survived. <laughs> Well, uh, a relative of mine is a conspiracy theorist. Yes. Um, Anti-vaxxer, pro-Trump, pro-Putin, all cops are bastards. Just like the biggest bunch of losers ever, you know what I mean? And they share every conspiracy theory under the sun. And um, I checked his uh, Facebook recently, and he had shared one of the... It's like poetry. It's like poetry. It's it's almost like T.S. Eliot. It's so mad in the way it's... It was a post about um, Zelensky, the president of Ukraine, because like all conspiracy theorists, they they got this they got this hard on for Vladimir Putin as like a strong man, and they kind sticking of... it to the West. So this uh, this was posted um, just with a picture of Vladimir Zelensky, um, and uh, it just says this, and it's beautiful in its madness. Mm. So sure of defeating the Dark Lord, he issues a decree by hologram, wearing a dark side t-shirt, telling the truth in plain sight, just like the Macfisto does. Such paradoxical divinity few minds can take, such Faustian prowess, processing the seven lower realms of Dante's Inferno. Perception is power, opposites attract, from Adam to Atom, and from the Immaculate's atomic holy fusion, from the womb to the tomb, from Rome to Jerusalem, from Caesar to Khazar, the great work of the great reset of the ungrateful, the future, cashless, contactless, clueless, clever, Kabbalah, Kabbal. Oh, this is so true. Man. That's so true. So man. true, man. You know, at the clever, end of Kabbalah, the day, from Kabbal. Adam to Atom, uh, you know, yeah. and the atomic holy fusion. From Rome to Jerusalem. So, guys, let's raise a glass. To the cashless, the contactless, contactless, the clueless, the the clever, Kabbalah, Kabbalah.